Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh. Today is Monday, March 27th, beginning of a new week, the last week of March. Um, I'm somewhat distracted looking out the window if you're on video. Uh, keeping an eye on the kitties. We have been training the kitten, Killian, to harness. So he's so cute because Jackson, our older cat, uh, has been wearing a harness for a long time when he goes outside and I have a very long uh, leash that he can go out on and he's got his patterns uh, and it's mostly so he doesn't run off too far and so I can keep an eye on him. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, Jackson after breakfast loves to get his harness on, especially now that the weather's warming up a little, although still snowing. I mean, this has been like the coldest, snowiest spring I can recall, which is great for fire season. But at any rate, uh, it's so funny to watch the, the kitten and how carefully he observes what the older cat does. Um, and so Killian will watch me put that harness on Jackson and he will line up. He'll go and he'll sit in the same spot and be ready for the harness. And he doesn't really like it going on. So sometimes he'll like start to wrestle me and stuff. And so I'll stop and say, okay, you don't have to have it on. But then he'll go back and sit in the spot because he does want to go out and be with the big kitties. So but he's still not clear on the concept of that leash and he gets really bound up quickly. So I'm keeping an eye on him to make sure he doesn't um, get himself all wound up around this chair, which he actually may have done. Yeah, I'm going to have to go check on him. You know, it's an interesting question, <clears throat> you know, about letting the cats outside and so forth, that there are... Um, Lots of people who say that if you don't let the cats go outside, that they will never miss it, that you can't miss something you never had, um, which I find to be an interesting philosophical debate. <sighs> Sorry, I like ran out there and then ran back up the steps slightly out of breath. So can you miss something that you never had? I think you can. Uh, I think the idea that we are somehow limited to only missing those things we've already experienced is, um, well, limited. And I don't think that um, animals are so much different than we are that way. So, you know, it's interesting introducing Killian to the outside in judicious me measures so that he'll be safe. But it's so exciting to him. It's so stimulating. You can just see him taking everything in. And even coming to our house from the house where he was born, uh, he was born in a house in Albuquerque that was um, a very low house and tucked into a tight neighborhood. And I remember it being very dark. I think they had the windows covered, you know, like some people like that. They want their house to be more like a den. But uh, not me. <laughs> I'm more like the house that's the tower on the hill. And we are. We are on this hill. And some of you may have seen some of my photos. You know, like we have these great expansive views in every direction. We have huge windows. <clears throat> and you can see very far in all directions, which is what I like to have. I suppose any time that I'm going to like check on him, I should pause this so that I'm not pausing you all with a silence. Anyway, I think we've all had the experience of finding a person or a place or a thing and having it answer a need we didn't realize we had, right? Um, finding like a new lover who touches you in a way that you just didn't know that you could respond to perhaps or going to 
a place you've never been to before and feeling like you've come home. I think that there are so many things in the world where we discover things that, um, that we missed without knowing what it was we were missing until we find it. And then you get that wonderful clicking sensation. Um, and maybe sometimes that has to do with a creative process too, right? You know, like when you finally start writing. So speaking of writing and creative process, one thing I did over the weekend was I finally rebooted my Patreon and I set up a discord. Both are called Jeffy's closet. Um, after my private Facebook group and my, uh, Tumblr, which I also resurrected. Um, so yeah, I started out Patreon a long time ago, like 2016, which is nice because I'm apparently grandfathered in on some of the percentages. So go me. Uh, I did too. I did like a writing coaching, mentoring one and, and then one that was like delivering writing stuff. And I didn't love either. Um, and it was funny because I could see that I still had like five patrons on my writing, mentoring one, coaching one. And, you know, like the last time I had done anything for them to, you know, like where I got paid for it, it was 2018. Uh, and I know I had more on the writing one. I haven't looked at how many were on there, but I found that I would much rather write and sell books. Um, also 2016 was the year that I just like, I, you know, I, it was when I went for full-time writing and I was trying all kinds of gigs and it was too much. I did too many things too fast, but now I feel like I know what I'm doing. Actually, ironically enough, low these, well, let's say five years later, since 2018 was the last time I did that. Uh, so I'm really excited about how I'm setting this up. So basically the Patreon is just a gateway to a discord and it's going to be a private discord just for patrons. And there will be different tiers where you will have access to, um, you know, like for the $5 a month, you can just be part of the community and be part of conversations. And then there will be exclusive channels for different levels of writers. So for beginning, intermediate, advanced authors, uh, you'll have access to channels where you can talk about certain topics and I will come in and I will uh, give advice. Basically, I'm trying to figure out a way for me to take what I'm already doing with advice and coaching and so forth and uh, make it an income stream, make it something where I'm not doing stuff for free. <sighs> So, um, but I'm really excited about this too, because I feel like doing it through the Patreon also creates a certain gateway so that, um, this is not going to be a place for people to say, well, what is Kindle Unlimited? What is KDP? Uh, you can certainly come in and ask those questions and we will point you to the appropriate resources, but this is more for an opportunity to get advice from someone who's been around the block. Right. And I'm going to encourage a bunch of my, uh, expert author friends to come in too and weigh in. And one thing I'd like to do is have channels where we can have some of the conversations that we are already having, uh, where we're asking each other for advice and input on stuff and make it be so that, uh, up and coming authors can, can sort of be a fly on the wall for those conversations so that you can hear those things and sort of see how we make decisions about stuff when we're farther up in the career. Something I've talked about a whole lot was when I first went to RWA national conference, I was so blown away that the big names were there. Um, you know, that like Linda Howard was there and Nora Roberts was there and Jane Ann Krentz and Susan Elizabeth Phillips and that you could actually ask them questions or that Jane Ann Krentz and Susan Elizabeth Phillips would do this, you know, bet secrets of the best selling sisterhood where they would basically do a tag team conversation. That was, um, amazing. So 
I'm hoping to create something like that. I want this to be a supportive community and also a place where people can get get good information. I I feel like there's so much bad information out there. Uh, so I'm going to be careful that people don't offer advice unless they've actually had the experience. It'll be in the ground rules. Uh, and I've got a great crew already to help me moderate it and uh, keep the community going and so forth. So I'm excited about that. So I'll get ready to launch it soon, um, probably next month. Yeah, so so look for that. It should be uh, should be great. Um, oh, and also we'll have things like um, weekly Q and A's. That's another tier. Monthly Q and A's, uh, and then there'll be an opportunity to do like live coaching, um, either in a group or individually with me. So, um, yeah, should be a great place. And I think we'll, I'm hoping we'll have like a sprints channel too, you know, like that'll be for the general community where people can, uh, do accountability. And I'm just seeing what the cats are up to. So look for that coming. Um, I may tie in the podcast to this in some way uh, we'll see um, update on YouTube monetization I talked about this on Friday um, still doing well um, it's making good money um, it lags by a couple of days but in the first few days I had already made as much half as much as I made from find away voices all last month um, and they distribute some of the audio books for me. So that's cool, huh? Uh, I did get one person complaining that there were so many ads on the audio book that they are otherwise listening to for free. So I just deleted their comment. I was like, you know, if you're gonna <laughs> listen to stuff for free that, you know, normally you have to pay to listen to an audio book and, you know, don't bitch at me about the ads. Uh, I've probably come away on that. I used to uh, really hesitate to monetize stuff because um, I felt self-conscious about it, maybe. But, you know, it's like I'm still paying off those audiobooks, people. So, <laughs> so yeah, people can listen to the ads. I'm sorry if VRBO thinks it should be verbal. Um, do tell me. I mean, if you happen to be one of the people who listens to the audiobooks, or if, if there are ads on this podcast, which there probably are, if there's an obnoxious advertiser or an obnoxious ad, let me know. Okay, sorry, I thought thought the kitten was off his harness, but he's just um, he's moving better. He's getting it figured it out. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, cats in New Mexico weather, cat wrangling absolutely uh, tags for some of these episodes. That's part of what you get for the informal nature. So um, progress on Rogue Familiar. It's coming along. It's coming along. Um, I should crack 70,000 words on it today. I may have misleadingly said that I was already there, but I'm at like 68, 820, but hopefully we'll get there today. Um, I had a very funny conversation with my assistant, Kareen, over the weekend. She messaged me and asked me if I could provide a snippet for um, one of the wonderful book bloggers, uh, Jen Twymom. Uh, she has a great book recommendation blog, reviews audiobooks, all that sort of thing. Uh, and assistant Kareen asked if I could um, <laughs> provide a snippet for her from Rogue Familiar. And, and I said, well, do you want me to just send you the whole book and you can choose? And she said, well, you're just trying to tempt me. And I was like, well, actually not. I said, and I felt, it felt like such a dark confession. I said, you know, actually I'm afraid. Um, okay. Now we're definitely hung up. All right. Now they're back in, so there won't be any more interruptions. Uh, 
but it was very funny because Kitten is still not clear on the whole concept and he'd gotten his leash hung up and when I freed it he like went bolting at top speed trying to run away from the thing and then of course immediately hit the end of the line and was squawking at me so but it's okay now everybody is out of their harnesses they're inside we can we can chill now so um oh I was telling you the story about my assistant so I felt like this was kind of a confession because she said well you're just trying to tempt me by sending me the book and I said um actually no because I'm <laughs> really worried that this book is terrible actually <laughs> And she replied and she said, you always think so. And it's never true. And, and I, in all honesty, I said, do I always think so at this stage? And she's like, yes, yes. She said, there is always a point when writing, when you start questioning everything, she said, but I'm happy to find the time to read. And I got a really nice um, comment from one of you via YouTube on uh, having finished shadow wizard saying, how each book is better than the last and how do I do it, which was came at exactly the right time. So thank you very much. If you listen to this podcast, um, <laughs> it was like, I, I guess I do do this every time. And I've talked about it before that it's like part of the creative process, but it's one of those things that like when you're in it, you can't see it. Um, I think I mentioned that I rewatched blah, blah, blah good omens. I wanted to say great omens. <laughs> That's the sequel. Uh, I rewatched good omens. Um, it's just six episodes and I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to see some things about the story and what they did. And it was, it was delightful on rewatch. And one of the things that they have in there is that, um, that the witch anathema, when she meets Adam, the antichrist, that she can't see his aura and they said that it's for the same reason that uh, that people in uh times square can't see new york city and and they show how big adam's aura is that's enormous um i think that's a good analogy for like when you're in the midst of writing a book and you are so deep into it that you just can't it's like, even if you intellectually know that you go through this every time, it's that particular crisis of faith that's like, oh, this book is not working. Um, and, and thank you all for the thoughts on why maybe this book has been particularly difficult to write. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe it's not particularly difficult to write. And I just think that because I'm in the middle of it. Uh, but all my friends apparently know me really well because if I'm, emotionally angsty about something or another they're like just finish the book Debbie <laughs> it's like oh okay <laughs> go write my book now so um oh yeah uh yeah it's it's creative process right it always has to be a little bit of pain or you're not stretching Um, other things, we watched Daisy Jones and the Six, highly recommend, great show, really fun. I did not read the book. I'm kind of tempted to now, but I feel like the show really, the casting was amazing. Um, all of the female characters were fantastic. It was a good crossover for us because David loves anything to do with rock and roll and bands and stuff. He even got really emotional at one point remembering his old band and uh, that was kind of cool to see so really enjoyed that show um yeah so I, I i'm trying to think if i have anything smart to say about daisy jones on the six i thought i wasn't gonna like the ending and then i think they pulled it off you know it's very difficult to do any kind of love triangle story and have everybody come away happy and feeling like um, that everyone was served well by the story. Um, yeah. And, and, and this is, I feel like I'm not really 
spoiling anything by telling you that this is partly about a love triangle as well as putting a band together. Uh, and the author had said, whose name I can't think of, Babney, uh, had said that she was inspired by watching Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham singing at each other and obviously, and, and Fleetwood Mac. It was very much structured around like Fleetwood Mac and how they had been. And, you know, that was, they had all sorts of incestuous interconnections within the band. Um, you know, polyamory is an interesting thing and like what the links people go to, it, it never works out as neatly in life, I think, as it does in fiction, but maybe I'm wrong. So anyway, that would be another tangent. Uh, I am off. I'm going to get some work done today, reconcile my husband's medication, uh, all in a day. So I hope you all have a great start to your week. I hope that you are able to launch some things that you want to get done and uh, liberate those creatures who depend on you, who are entangled. And I will talk to you all on Friday. You all take care. Bye-bye.